So I usually name my introduction training Y1 because it means like it's a really introduction. So do not expect anything super deep, but it's, you know, the high level overview, what is PowerShell core, uh, how it works, what are the di main differences uh, compared to traditional uh, uh, shells in Linux. Again, my name is Stepan Bechinsky and I'm a Azure technical trainer at Microsoft. So my main responsibility is to train the companies and uh, Microsoft partner to use uh, uh, Microsoft Azure. So probably the main difference, if, if, if you think about what you know from the Linux, you know, the Bash shell, uh, K shell, there are many of them. So the main difference is compared to PowerShell is that it works with the objects. So you are not sending, if you are sending the output from one, it's go from one command to another one using the pipe, it's not a text, it's a object. So it's a object based uh, command line. Of course, it can, you can, you like it, you can like it, you maybe you will not like it. So I'm, but I'm a quite big fan of this because it makes a lot of things really easier and you can work with this, uh, you know, a little different way. Of course, it's a little different mindset compared to traditional uh, text-based uh, shells. Instead of using the commands, there is uh, something we call commandlets. So the commandlet is a, let's say, built-in functionality. You can create your own commandlets. You can extend uh, the existing ones, and so on. But you can combine it with other Linux commands. So in one shell, you can use, let's say, PowerShell-like commandlets, or you can, of course, use any other tool. I don't know, grab, ask, set, all those tools you already know uh, from the Linux. If you want to install it, uh, there is a documentation. I will show it to you in a few minutes. So we, we are supporting uh, many versions. So, of, so let's say officially we are supporting uh, many versions of the and Linux distributions. Of course, it works with the Mac OS, it works on ARM, it works on Windows because everything is built on top of uh, .NET Core. And .NET Core is a version of the .NET environment available for uh, almost any operating system. So let's stop my presentation and let's start something interesting. So first of all, uh, as I already told you, if you want to install it, uh, there is a documentation. Uh, we are supporting, uh, there is official support for uh, many Linux uh, distributions. And usually the, the way how to install it is usually to use some packaging system based on the Linux distribution you are uh, you are using. So to install it, it's uh, usually quite uh, quite easy. So when I connect to my uh, VM with the Linux, so if you want to go into the PowerShell command prompt, you just need to run it, which is pwsh, and now I am in a PowerShell command prompt. So of course I can use all Linux based uh, commands, you know, it works because it's runs on Linux, but of course I can use, uh, I can use commandlets. So you can see this is a commandlet. So there are really many of them and you can extend existing set of your command lets. So what you can do, you can create a module with a new command lets. So you can imagine that the command, command let is a command for PowerShell and those commands are not, are let's say object-based. So they are not pushing the text to the output of the, of the screen or they are not pushing the text uh, using the pipe to another command let's it works with objects so i will speak about it uh, more uh, later so uh, the idea behind command let is that uh, there is some let's say 
standardization so we are trying to make it uh, we are trying to make it uh, you know easy to understand so if i run this uh, let me sec. sorry so if i uh, run my command line, which is called get verb you see uh, something you see verbs and there are recommendations how to name commands so if you want to create add a resource to container whatever you should use the add something so we have uh, so this is a verb and this is a noun and here you can see like a recommendation how to name your command lines and if you go through this documentation, you can understand better. So if, if I'm expecting, okay, I need to, I need some information. So probably I will need some get verb. So I will ask for a get verb. So if I run, get the verb again and I run oh, sorry give me a I'm on super small place now I have a very small table so I am my computer send them the screen setup is very strange so I have, uh, there is another command or a command line which is called get command. And I can do something like this get verb get. And you see how many get commands I have here. So all those commands starting with get giving me something. So using uh, get command you can start those things like this for example so i want to i know i want to work with the files so i need want to get some information about the files so i see okay there is only one get file hash so now using this get command you can search for the commands so i know i want to get the information so this is based on output get verb i know if i want to get something if i looking for some information i need to use verb get and then i am i want to work with the files so using this i can search for the commands so i can show it to you on a different uh, machine so now i'm i just switched to another uh, linux machine uh, this one I am controlling from the, my web browser and it's a, a developer console for Azure. So only thing I want to show you here is that if I go, for example, get command here and I say noun is a Z, I will see big amount of commands related to Azure command line. So there are really hundreds of them. And for example, I know I, so I kill it. So there are really many, many of them. And now what can I do here? If it stopped somewhere. Okay. So I know, for example, I, I want to create a new, I want to create a new, uh, VM, for example, so I just do this. Okay, I want to work. I want to create a new VM. So then it shows me. Okay, commandlet new VM. So it means that hey, this is the right commandlet if I want to create a new virtual machine. So using this get command, you can search for commandlet. So if you are new, uh, you are starting with this. This is the way how you can search. Now, 
I'm of course interested in getting some help. So it's easy, just get help. Name of uh, commandlet. And then I should get the help. This is very similar uh, to month pages in uh, Linux. And again, using the different switches, you can see here, I can get, uh, for example, examples. So this is the common examples for, for using this command lab. So this is super, you know, this is the easy way how to get uh, the information. This is the easy way how to get information you, uh, you need. Okay, just scroll down a little. Okay. So I do another example for you. So I use, so I will use uh, this command. And this one is, you know, to calculating the hash uh, of the file. So what I can do here, I just can do get file hash. I read the documentation. So now I can calculate the hash, for example, for this file. And again, as you see, the output here, it's an object. So what can I do? I can do, for example, this one. And now I'm getting only the hash. This is now I'm getting only what I need. But how, how to know what the command let is returning? So for this one, we have uh, Very nice, another command let surprisingly, which is called get member. And it shows you the members of the object. And you see it's a real object, there are some methods. And I have some properties and the properties you can see here. So on the top here, you can see the properties. And in my previous example, I ask for the property. Uh, if you need to pass only some, so uh, if you want to work this, this way, of course, what can I do? I can create, a, let's say, variable, and I can, can put the output of the command led to variable. And again, if I use the get member, you see my variable is uh, object, so I can do something like this, for example. So the idea here is that the commandlets are working with the object. So um, it doesn't return a string, it returns the object. So then you can do a lot of things with this. So for example, if I want to get only, so if I want to get only some object, some part of the output, and I want to uh, pass it to another commandlet, so I can use select, object and I say, okay, I want just a hash. And again, it's another object. So I just, you know, put, I just take what I need from the output. And of course I, you can do something like uh, this. Okay. So the pipe here, so the pipe, you know, from Linux, doesn't, you know, move the text from one up to another one. It moves the objects. So you are working on the object level. 
So if you if you think about uh, about this, you can uh, you can do uh, quite a lot of things here with this. So there is uh, another. Uh, let's use this one. Get process. It shows you the it shows the processes. There are not so many here because it's really it's really super easy. Uh, yeah. But what you can do. You can do, for example, something like this. So I switch to another VM where we have, uh, let's say, uh, more processes. So I'm looking with the processes. If there is some process starting with uh, P, and you can see. There are. So you can use sorry, this one where object, then you can use uh, regular expressions to search for some value in the property. So it works with the property name. So if I want to know what properties are available, again, I need to go go get process, get member, and you can see all properties I am getting about the processes. Of course, it doesn't show if it doesn't show all. So if I run just the get process, you will see it will show me just some selected properties, not all of them, because there are really many, many of them. But using the select object, for example, command let I can pick up another from the list available available here okay so it can be quite complex so this is more complex one so again i list all processes then i am looking only the processes where cpu usage in seconds is greater then 100, then I sort it and then I pick up just top uh, top three. So this is the way how it works. So I'm sending the objects from one command line to another one, and then I can manipulate with it, just working with the property name of the object. And the object can be really complex. So again, if I scroll up here, you see that the object returned by the get process is very complex. You have a lot of information here. So then you can easily filter it and select uh, select what you select what you really need. Uh, if you have something quite more complex, you can choose a different formatting. So for example, I can do I don't know format. List so it shows me the information in uh, in different uh, shows me the information in uh, different uh, different way. So this is the main idea here that you are working with the object. So you are not passing the information using the text pipeline. You are using the it's a object it's a object pipeline object pipeline here. So this is uh, like a basic information. So of course, if you want to do something more complex, uh, you can. So I switch to some code. So what you see now here, I can make the font a little bigger here. Give me a sec. So I make it a little bigger. So how to work with the variables? So working with the variables is quite easy. You just need to do, you need just need to use the dollar sign and the variable name. Uh, of course, the the variable is again it's an object, so you can uh, you can you can, it's an automatic data type detection. But of course, what you can uh, what you can do you can tell the data type. You will see it in next. Uh, example. So if I 
use if I take, for example, again this one, I run it here and I do again the resource group. Get member, so you sh you see it's a it's a string. So there is an automatic way, you know, it's a automatic uh, type detection. Okay, so uh, the working with the if you need to do some loops or if you need to do some if statement and so on. Again, it's very uh, probably similar to you. So nothing special. The only thing is that you are not using uh, the greater than sign or equal sign. You are using this LT, GT, uh, EQ, and so on. And if you look at it, and um, if you are <laughs> if you are familiar with the Perl, so some concept of the language of the PowerShell are from uh, Perl programming language. So you will be you will you will see those implicit uh, variables in PowerShell because, you know, some ideas, you know, how the language is working are similar to uh, to Perl. But here, if you program in the Perl, I did, I was a Perl developer oh, 20 years ago, but it was, it was a lot of fun to develop in, uh, in Perl, believe me. Uh, here you can see how to create a dictionary. Usually the dictionary you are using uh, usually as a parameter of commandlet. You can see the usage here. So if you want to use it as a parameter, you just need to use at sign. The if you want to access uh, parts of your uh, dictionary, of course, you use the dollar sign here. But if you want to path it as a parameter, you need to use uh, uh, you need to use uh, at sign. Uh, so using the PowerShell, you can write quite complex scripts because you know the programming language is uh, uh, quite powerful. And what's interesting here is because it's built on uh, .NET, so on the on the backend of the PowerShell, uh, there is a .NET and .NET Core to be more uh, to be more uh, precise. And so you can call any uh, you can call anything from the .NET. So, for example, here I have uh, some example. It's a PowerShell, but you can see I have I am using this new object commandlet, and this is an object from .NET. So I can call and I can use any .NET object inside the PowerShell because it's built on top of uh, the PowerShell, so I can use anything which is from PowerShell, uh, sorry, from, uh, from .NET. So using this new object, I can create a new object based on the object from uh, .NET. Uh, this is the type conversion. This is the way how you uh, convert it, but if I look to for this one in uh, documentation here. So it's a standard .NET class, but I create the instance of this class inside uh, inside the PowerShell. Another, you think you can see the escape, uh, the escape sequence is uh, different here. So it's not the backslash, it's, uh, it's uh, Opposite apostrophe, no idea how to name it correctly. And you see another thing here, which is uh, uh, this, uh, let's say, warning or recommendation that the echo is an alias. So again, you can create the aliases here. So you don't, instead of writing the full name of the command lab, you can create the alias. Uh, it's not recommended. Uh, so if you speak about, speak about the best practices, it's not recommended to use the aliases because, uh, you know, the idea behind the com command lets is that, and especially the naming convention of the command lets is that if you see the name of the command let, 
you should be able to understand what is it doing uh, without any uh, help you know to make, you know th there is a try to make it uh, as easy readable for the humans as possible so the echo is not recommended one instead of you should use the right output because the echo is alias for right output uh, for right output uh, command line. If I jump back here, because you see the, you know, how to work with the strings. So using, uh, using the strings is uh, again, quite simple. Uh, here we go. So you just use the string, then you can use the F format parameter. And again, there are some common options you have with the, this uh, formatting, this formatting strings uh, and so on. Uh, the file extension is uh, PS1. So this is the common file extension. Uh, the one thing which is unfortunately not working now, but I expect will change uh, on uh, Linux is the way how is the signing uh, the script. So what you can do, you can uh, force some politics, at least on the Windows operating system, and which means that you are forcing that all scripts must be signed. So you can sign the script and the signature is on the end of the script. So if someone change the signature, change the script, then the signature is not valid. And then uh, the system will uh, not allow uh, to run those scripts which are, uh, which are changed. Unfortunately, this is not yet available uh, on Linux in the current version, but I expect uh, it will, uh, I expect it will be, uh, it will be there. Okay. So we have some few minutes left for the questions. So it was my, just a basic overview. What is the PowerShell? What is the idea behind the PowerShell? What are the basic principles of the PowerShell? Uh, in Windows world, uh, the PowerShell world is uh, the PowerShell probably the most uh, used way how to automate uh, some administrative tasks. So all main, uh, all main applications uh, and servers running on Windows, they support uh, the PowerShell. So with the PowerShell, you can control different servers, uh, different operating Windows operating system and so on. And now you can use the PowerShell on uh, Linux too.